Okay, so continuing the bullshit and lies from Shannon, here's the next part of her letter. Since you didn't reply and went on your own, referring to the Barbie movie, I assume the two of you had tickets and wanted to go yourself. Again, did not do any effort to get a hold of us or ask or invite us. I promise you we did not mean to insult or screw up any plans that were already, that were apparently miscommunicated. There are so many long texts between us relating to cleaning and packing, etc. There are some texts that indicate that you might not be able to lose a weekend day due to packing and cleaning close to the wedding around March of this year. That has, The Barbie movie came out in, what, July of 2023? What does packing and moving this year have to do with anything? There's a message where McGann is saying holiday season is going to be hard to plan things around due to all sorts of things. This was from September. Yes, this was when I'm telling her, hey, October books up quickly. So no, I don't have any weekdays or weekends in October left. We took this to mean that there might not be time for us in your schedule to hang out other than the one day at the zoo. We invited them to more things than just the zoo. But since that was the one my husband referred to in his text, she's going to pretend like that's the only one that ever happened. We even offered to help move. And since you didn't take us up on the offer, we just assumed you wanted it to be just the two of you. Who wants to move by themselves? Um, they said something to the effect of, oh, what's your moving day? And I'm like, we don't have one. We're moving one car load at a time. That That's all that was ever said. There was no, hey, we'll come help you on this day if you need help. Like that was never explicitly offered. Maybe she thought she was implying it, but she never said, hey, we can come on the 25th of May and help you guys move. Like that was never said. She said, when's your move out day? We don't have one. Asked and answered honestly. She's there is nothing in our text to each other that supports me freezing her out and being an ice queen, except that you weren't texting me for weeks and weeks after the miscarriage and only texting my husband. As far as the Stranger Things watch party, again, a miscommunication. We did have it on the calendar. From what I remember, I followed up with you several times to ask if you were still coming and what time you planned to be there. Again, my husband doesn't respond. That's why Shannon and I always handled this on our own, but she didn't text me fucking once to ask a question. You kept responding that you would let us know. Even the day before, I asked what time and you said you'd get back to me. At this point, we weren't sure if you were coming. And yes, we decided to go for a hike. So at no point could you fucking say, hey, since we didn't hear from you, we're going to cancel it. So you can you can text him over and over and over and over and over again to try and, and get a response, which I, I don't even think she did it that frequently, probably once, maybe twice. But you can do that, but you can't say, okay, well, we're going to cancel because we haven't heard from you. And again, the only reason she didn't hear from us is because she stopped talking to me. Also, if you have plans on the calendar for two fucking months and you cancel them without telling that you're canceling them, you're just a fucking bitch. And why would I want to schedule anything else with you? Thanksgiving 2023, as far as leaving town without telling you, because we were expecting that because you were expecting that we were going to have it at our house again, we did not mean to exclude or not inform you. This was an oversight if we didn't mention anything. They didn't. Just as info, this was my first Thanksgiving I can ever remember spending with my dad. Since my folks have been divorced since I was six years old, I can't even remember any Thanksgivings that we spent together. So the first Thanksgiving I spent with my father in over 35 years. I'm sorry that we messed up your plans for that holiday. Bitch! Nobody said, don't go see your dad. We said, hey, can you let us know what the fucking holiday plans are? Because my husband's family always does everything together. Oh my God, this woman, so manipulative. Cookies for Christmas? No, we didn't change the location to make your lives miserable. Who said that? We said you didn't tell us anything about when they were happening. Jesus, from my understanding, I thought your parents wanted to do it here because our kitchen was better. We certainly didn't mean to exclude you from this. Then invite us. Then tell us it's happening. Don't act like, oh, you were invited, but nobody informed us of when it was going to happen. And now here we get into super bitch mode. Now I want to address the comment that I supposedly made to McGann. Stephen never wanted that baby. He was forced into it. Oh, good. She remembers it verbatim. I cannot believe that someone would even think I would have said something like this because you said it. I reread your message multiple times and I've burst into tears every time. How do you think it felt hearing it after going through a miscarriage? How do you think it felt hearing it from somebody you thought was your friend, you two-faced cunt? First of all, when the two of you came over here to share the news about the miscarriage, we consoled you the entire time you were here. Absolute lies. Shannon just kept tweaking and twitching and going, don't listen to your doctor. Don't listen to your OBGYN. They just want your money. I'm, I'm the parent's favorite. I'm the parent's favorite. She kept finding a way to say that like every 10 minutes. 
At one point, I looked up from the hug your brother and I had you in and saw McGann sitting there by herself on a separated stool, thinking, OMG, she's the one who actually had to deal with the physical and mental trauma from having to carry this baby that didn't survive. She needs some love, too. Like, really? You didn't think that one second at all prior to that moment? Because that's, that's kind of weird that you can't piece anything together. But okay, tell us that you're dumb without telling us that you're dumb. So when things had calmed a little, oh, when things had calmed a bit from my memory, Will came out with a game that he asked to play. Yes, Binding of Isaac. I asked McGann if she wanted to watch, to play or watch or maybe go someplace other than there. And she wanted to go. That is absolutely not how that went. First of all, Shannon was trying to get me to follow her into the shower. And I was like, now nah, I'm good. Uh, second of all, when Will came out with the game, we all went, Stephen and myself with Will went into the basement. We are looking at Binding of Isaac. I'm just kind of going through my phone and Shannon's like, hey, I'm out of the shower. Come with me to Aldi. 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 And I'm just like, I don't really want to, but she keeps asking. So maybe she wants to like say something private. I, I don't know what's going on, but I don't want to fucking go. But I can't be like so rude to not go when you ask me 600 times. Don't don't act like I wanted to get out of there because I have never before gone somewhere else when she asks. I like to be with my person. I don't like to be with people that I'm vaguely friends with. I legit only wanted to support her in that moment and give her some feminine bonding time. On our way there, I asked if she had shared with friends and family and she indicated that she that they didn't seem to care. I asked if she had been able to talk to her therapist and she indicated that they weren't answering her calls. And that's that's a half truth thing. Um I was getting some really weird comments from my friends like, oh, yay, the universe is telling you something. This is a good thing. And my therapist was, I think, on vacation, so I wasn't getting her back with me. So, yeah, clearly she remembers the fucking day, right? She also implied that she's had miscarriages before. So I told her that I couldn't even fathom what she must be going through, but that I was there for her if she needed to talk or vent or cry or whatever. I never in this life or any other would tell a woman grieving her miscarried baby that her partner didn't want that child. And I sure as hell wouldn't tell her I thought she forced you into it. I've replayed that day so many times since reading your text and I didn't say anything that could have been misconstrued into that quote absolute fucking lie because she said it because it felt like my blood went cold i felt like i got stabbed it seared into my fucking brain and i barely spoke for the rest of the time that we were together and for her to recall all of this other bit all these other tidbits and fucking cut it off right before she turned into a bitch yeah you're doing that on purpose nobody's fooled shannon second of all if you truly don't think you said this, then why aren't you talking to me and saying, hey, wait, when did this happen? What happened? I don't remember this. Can we talk it out? Nope, she's not doing it. She's just trying to tell my husband I'm a liar. You know me, Stephen, which is where my husband actually went. <coughs> no, I don't. If I truly thought that someone was forcing you into something, I would have told you, and I didn't, because I never said any of that. I really wish you would have brought this up to me when it was actually said, instead of letting it build up to a point where you actually hate me now. And again, she's worried about Stephen hating her, but, but not me, the person who she wronged and mistreated in this situation. As for the TikTok video, the one that started all of this, yes, of course, McGann has the right to vent on social media, but calling out your mom, your brother, and me for things that were entirely misread was not okay. If our roles had been reversed and I blasted the two of you for coming late for pictures and being in some without us at both our reception and wedding, wouldn't you have wanted to defend the two of you? Um, not if it was indefensible, because again, they didn't just go in the corner of the reception hall to get pictures with the photographer. They took the photographer out of the reception, lied to her and said that they had our permission to do this, and then took personal private family photos, all, all while missing the photos that they were supposed to be in. Because if that had happened, you know that all of it was a misunderstood. That doesn't even make sense. We didn't get upset that you were late. There was so much happening during the day, similar to your reception day. We weren't late to their reception. What, what is that nonsense? Yes, on the wedding invitation, it clearly stated what time we were having photos taken and whoever wanted to could join. No one was mad that you weren't there to be in photos, though. We couldn't find where the photos were happening. That was the point. We were there on time, but there were no signs. There was nobody directing people. Nothing. In fact, most of the family didn't come out to take photos who were there because they couldn't find you. I didn't get offended when I saw photos of you two without me. Uh, okay, so you're better than us, huh? Is it, that's, that's what that's supposed to read like? Because that's all it does read like. I'm better than you. I mailed copies of them to you in a thank you card for helping us celebrate our special day, bitch.